meeting to order. Come with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It is uh, Wednesday, May 9th. Uh, for the record, the uh, Finance Committee does have a quorum this evening, and we will be uh, reviewing and voting on Articles 4, 7, and 26 from the annual town meeting. Warrant. Mike? Okay, yep. Just um, in your packets, you have uh, the score sheets for each of the special and the annual, and uh, the warrant that's been posted. And um, then the recommendations uh, for the warrant as of now. Okay. And I just included um, a sheet to show the history of uh, increases in the school budget in the Springtown meeting. And you can see um, 16, 17, and 18, obviously, um, significant increases. Other than those three years, that this current year that we're going into, mm -hmm. um, their budget increases more than it has in any of the other years preceding that in this chart, um, back to 2008. Um, and also, remember back in those years, we didn't have school choice, so we didn't have uh, $600,000 of additional money to uh, use in the school department, yep. which we do have now. Yeah. And just also, I think um, Mr. DeLuca had mentioned about coming back in the fall, because usually the thought is in the spring that we don't fund the overtime for police, fire, and uh, communications and come back in the fall and uh, fund those so that the schools can open on September 1st. They need to have their budget in place. And as Mr. DeLuca had said, until 2015, the schools never came back in the fall for more money. Um, but it did start in 2015. There's a history there of uh, some of the supplements that were added in the fall. And then on the articles, uh, the first article I want to uh, take up is Article 4. Um, this is part of the Route 123 corridor improvement, um, which will go out to bid in the fall and begin construction in the spring of 19. Uh, the first segment of that project will be the lights at the off-ramps of uh, 495. Um, there will also be a light at the intersection of North and South um, Washington Streets. And sidewalks, two sidewalks on the East Main up to the hump and then one sidewalk after the hump. So um, this um, is to allow the selectmen, I'm looking to uh, appropriate uh, 70,000 out of free cash to um, compensate anyone that we have to for easements or land that we have to take along the way. Um, we do always hope that it will be donated, but we can't, uh, <laughs> we can't guarantee that. So we hope we don't have to use it. We will have to use some of it to hire an appraiser if someone mm -hmm. um, is not willing to donate the land, and uh, then we will have to uh, compensate them for the appraised value that's determined. So hopefully we won't have to, but uh, we do have to have it in place because we have to uh, have this all done this summer so they can go out to bid in October. Okay. How long is the corridor project? Is it you know, how goes from Pine yeah. Street to the highway? Okay, so that's about. And then the highway is a separate project that they're going to do work on the interchange. Yeah. Any improvements up there are not coming out of our road improvement. Yeah. That's not that's state highway. Yeah. We own the road up until 495 interchange. And most of that way is to follow up. Just most of that. 123 is a town road. Is it? I thought it was state. What West Main is state. Hey, okay, that's my problem. East Main is town. All so the way up all the way up to the interchange, then it's the state on the interchange, and then it's town from there to the east in line. Huh. I, I, 
I knew about yeah, West, and I guess I just assumed that East Main Street so, was the yeah. state highway. But we have, uh, where I live in Holbrook on uh, Route 37, we have sections that will go for a quarter of a mile state then it will go for a mile and a half town. Then it switches back to state again. So the plows go, and they lift their plow up. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So is, okay. Is I, it, I, thank you. I wow. just, I, mo all these years, I mostly did, on the Pine I, I Street side or Elm Street, street too? Street Elm, I mean, I both sides. Of both, both sides of the street okay. um, will be sidewalk. And we're using our Chapter 90 money this summer to put a sidewalk on um, East Main down by Wheaton on the side that doesn't have a sidewalk now. We're going to oh, be yeah. using our Chapter 90 money to put a sidewalk in there. That's good. That's, that's good. There's a lot of walking traffic there. Yeah. So the good thing will be once the bike trail is uh, done, we'll have uh, bike lanes, um, sidewalks, and then so people can walk on the bike trail. Or, ride their bikes on the bike trail and have a way to get to it. Um, does this do anything to eliminate uh, the hump in any way? Um, not really. They can't because the pipe for the sore is not down that far. They can they can do a little leveling, but not much. And, and where the, when the bike path gets built, that's where the crossing is going to be. Right. Are there plans for lights? They are, they are coordinating that with the uh, other engineering firm. We have VHB. Um, for the high, highway work, and uh, Beta is doing the uh, bike trail. Okay. But they have been in communication on that. Okay, thank you. Right. Walter, you said the road's going to include a bike path as in addition to the sidewalk? They'll have bike lanes, yeah. Bike lane. That's, that's why it's only um, <clears throat> one sidewalk over the hump, because it narrows down, unfortunately, up there. But out here, we have plenty of room. That's part of the problem on the road, even in front of Wheaton. There's plenty of room for bike lanes, because there used to be parking. I yeah. Yeah. So there's plenty of room for bike lanes, and it will be better to have the sidewalks and narrow the travel lanes down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, morning. What is it that determines what is a state highway and what is a town road? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> like, when did that happen? It, it's just. Um, Back in the day when the state was, um, towns didn't have money to construct roads, they'd work with the state, and the state, they'd convince the <clears throat> state legislators would get some bill passed to make, construct uh, West Main Street and Norton as a state highway, so that. Just yes, Aaron? Mike, how'd you come up with the number for $70,000? Because it, it seems to me that that might be kind of light. Um, just from experience, our our attorneys from Copeland and Page, Sharon Everett, she's dealt with a lot of them, and um, also uh, Craig Sheehan from the state who handles the um, acquisition portion of things. Um, <coughs> and based on our experience on Plain Street where we had people donate, we're just hoping that uh, <laughs> we'll come in good. What happens if that hope doesn't come true? Um, we would either have to have a special town meeting and appropriate money, or wait if we can wait until October, we would. But um, I would, I don't think we can wait that long, so we're, we think this will be enough. Well, uh, yeah, one other question on that. Just out of curiosity, on the area with the, with the two sidewalks, mm -hmm. how many linear feet do you think we need to add to, the, to, to our property or the easement? None. We're, everything's being constructed within the within the easement. The only area that there has to be um, land takings is um, on North Washington to make the turning radiuses onto 123. But there's plenty of room in the uh, layout, so there'll be utility easements for telephone poles and um, some temporary easements for grading and. Um, wetlands issues, but other than that, the, the sidewalk, the roadway, everything will be within the layout at, as it exists right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. How long is the project for, completed by? Um, it will take probably two years to finish it. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mike. I move to recommend Article 4, amount of $70,000 to come from free cash. Is there a second? OK. 
Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. The next article is Article 7, which is the uh, MSBA window project. And I just uh, happened to go on my Gmail account tonight, and this was in there, <laughs> sent to the, uh, by mistake to my Gmail um, from the superintendent. And it has uh, the numbers uh, from their um, consultant for the Norse, the Salmon East, and the Yell for the project. And the total um, project budget is $8,476,971. And projected town share is 3761232 um and if you uh want to move forward with this project um you would have to vote the full eight million uh four seven six nine seven one as we did with the high school project we would borrow um short-term loans until the project's closed out we know what msba is giving us before we would go out and do the final borrowing on that but we have to authorize the whole amount Yes, Paul. But uh, and I know how this works, but you're reasonably sure that the town's ultimate share will be the three seven. Um, right, because all we know is what we've been told from the MSBA that it's fifty point fifty five point six, or whatever that was percent fifty five point three. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, reimbursed. and so that's what this is based on. Right. Uh, well, let's hope it it holds. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But it, it's fifty-five percent of what they deem an acceptable. Ex approved, right? Yeah. So that could. Yep. All right. Yeah, I know how that works. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope there wouldn't be. I mean, the high school project obviously you had a lot of things as you go along, but windows. Um, I would hope it's pretty. Right, but I, there's, I, there's not much you can add. You know, I like Doctor Bayada was talking about like the vestibules and, and all that kind of additional stuff that may or may not right. be part of the pro be acceptable to the project. Right. So I would hope they'd have all that yeah. agreed upon before before they go out and purchase any of the windows. And and <clears throat> at the end of the day is a, is a long term financing twenty, thirty twenty. Is that standard for everything we do? It can be 30, but they don't advise. Their interest rates would be too high. Yep. And there's a possibility of um, introducing a debt exclusion? Yeah, the only issue with that, I mean, you, you can hope that, but you would be, at, for, in order for this to move forward, you would be authorized in borrowing. And then before we do the final borrowing, we could go out and try and do it as a debt exclusion but if the voters vote against it you've already committed to the borrowing so if they vote against a debt exclusion you still have the obligation to pay for it so you uh walter do grants like this have any impact on our local aid or is no this completely separate completely separate yeah bob Good evening, everyone. I want to stress one thing. With all the noise that's going on right now about budget shortfalls and all the issues that are happening, we're making a commitment. I fully agree with this, by the way. I think we have to do this. This is nonsense, but we have to do it. It's just, it just makes fiscal sense to do it. But to a couple of your points, this is money we're going to spend for the next 20 years. It's coming out of our budget. And I want to be perfectly clear about that up front. The payment, the long-term, and the short, either short-term or long-term borrowing, has to be paid from somewhere. That comes right off the top of everything we have available for cash. So if we support this without a debt exclusion, which is what we're going to do, next year when we're screaming about cutbacks and programs and departments and all that stuff, keep in mind that right away, almost, almost $400,000 a year, almost $400,000 a year is coming right off the top. So this year is tough, and we knew it was going to be tough. That's why we went for the uh, override last year. We knew it was going to happen. Um, next year is not looking any better. So you can cross off $400,000, 70% for schools, 30% for town. 
starting in, in fiscal 20. Okay. It's well, going to happen. Yeah. I just want to make sure people understand that. Yeah. Yeah. It's part of our debt. We understand that, but I want to make sure the public understands that any time we take on a project like this, it costs money, it comes off the top. So we may be really scratching next year to find out yeah. what to do. But again, I want to, I fully support it. I think it's the best thing we could do. We need to take advantage of that money. Yeah, I just think the payment schedule started really hitting was around 21 to 22, fiscal year 20, 22, I think. The, um, it would yeah. start in 2022 would be 420,000. Yeah. yeah. And then on Tom's birthday in 2041, it will be 211,000. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. No. <laughs> okay, uh, Aaron? No. What, are, what are the advantages and disadvantages of this being a debt exclusion versus just straight borrowing? Um, if it was a debt exclusion, then that 400 and 20,000 wouldn't be affecting budget. Our money that's available for budgets, it would be above two and a half. We'd so. still be paying it. Yeah. Right. right. It would be the taxpayers would be paying it, but we'd have that 420 wouldn't be coming out about two and a half. Uh, How often can we keep going back for debt exclusions? We had one for the high school. We only had one. You can go back as much as you as want. As people will vote for it, you can just keep doing it. Right. Yeah. And, They're adding and on the at least, at least, uh, what I've heard you say and everything else, we're so we're way below what our our debt limit, oh, so called, yeah. is imposed on us. Yeah. The state does tell you you can't borrow beyond a certain point, but we're nowhere near that. Yeah. Uh, no, nowhere near. So the article before us is, as it's presented by the school committee, it's what the it's. Hmm. And, and does the school committee have a recommendation about whether or not to go for a debt exclusion? Um, they did not. Does it I matter? Haven't, I haven't seen. Go for it and it fails. We're, we're still agreeing to borrow the money. So as long as we vote for Article Seven, or let's say we let's say we make a recommendation, mm -hmm. and that that pet this passes at town meeting. That means this project is going forward with or without a debt exclusion. No. Correct. That's correct. Yes. yes. Correct. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And you see the breakdown by schools. So, I mean, if one of them closes, you still got to pay that, <laughs> that, that note. Bill? Mike, what's our bond rating? Uh, I don't have it with me, but I don't want to, I don't, I'll say the wrong thing. I, I don't, I don't remember to be honest with you. And we haven't gone out this year, so. But I can give you, I'll let you know what the uh, bond rating was last time. Okay. Any other final questions? No, no motion. I'll make a motion. Sure. Uh, Chairman, I move you recommend Article 7, the amount of. Um, Eight million four hundred seventy-six thousand nine hundred and seventy-one to come from borrowing. Your second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Opposed? And uh, abstain. Abstain. Okay. One abstention. Motion carries. And then the last article, Article Twenty-Six. I did talk to the superintendent and. Uh, you would recommend no action on that now. Okay. <clears throat> Just wait. Yeah. No action. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mike. I move no action on Article 26. Is there a second? Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Motion carries. Okay. Anything else, Mike? Nope. All right. Let me know if you have to meet before town I, meeting. Yeah, we, we, we uh, have an agenda to meet at 6 o'clock in the cafeteria uh, before the meeting, which will now, if you want to mention where yeah. we held? Just um, not, we don't know, unfortunately, because uh, we have the open town meeting. Uh, so we don't know how many people are going to show up, um, which is always frustrating. But um, just to make sure. They're going to move the town meeting to the gym 
instead of the auditorium because if more than 400 show up, we don't have enough room in the auditorium. Or we have to set up the gym at 705. <laughs> mm. They can't do the video in both? Uh, no. Um, one, we would have had to make provisions for that well in advance. And two, in, uh, in order to do that, the moderator wants the people in either room, or any room that they're in, to be able to talk back from right. that room, not walk to the auditorium. So it gets gets expensive. Yeah. And so rather than set up in the auditorium and then have to move everyone to the gym, the decision was made today just to uh, go to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. Well, Mike, uh, I want to thank you on behalf of the committee this year, helping us uh, work this budget throughout. And we appreciate all the help you gave us. I want to, yeah, you know, I want to thank the committee uh, for all the work you've done. You know, it's not easy. You have to work with what you have, and you, um, you're trying to balance everything out. And uh, you know, I hope people uh, will understand that and appreciate all the work that you've done. And it's not an easy process, and it takes the knowledge that you have. And I hope people will honor that, and people won't show up at a town meeting and try and undo everything you've done over the last several months and uh, we'll move forward with the budget you recommend yep uh, we'll see thanks thanks mike thank thanks, you mike. thank you thank you mike okay <clears throat> if we can put our attention towards the meeting minutes of april 30th that i handed out earlier this was uh, uh yep uh, it's the end. Walter, could you pass a copy down, please? Great, for any. Uh, these were uh, these were uh, done by Amy, and um, I looked at them. They were well written. And uh, you could just review these. Um, I missed the last meeting. Did you vote on the annual report? The last meeting? The, the FinCom annual report? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, we did. Yeah. <coughs> Actually, yeah, we did. Yeah, actually, we did. Questions before we make a motion? Chairman Eric? Yes. Make um, a motion to accept the minutes of April 30th as written. Is there a second? second? Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, with that, is any other, before we adjourn, is there any other topics that we need to discuss? Open? Okay, so we do have our next meeting at 6 o'clock in the cafeteria at the high school before the annual. And um, if there are any uh, updates, I will uh, forward via email. With that. Mr. Chairman, motion to adjourn. Sec is there a second? Second. OK. All, uh, here. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Those unanimous. Motion is 